On January 29, 2006, while reporting from Iraq, my cameraman Doug Vogt and I were wounded by a roadside bomb. I nearly died, but I got the best military and civilian medical care in the world. I was very, very lucky. I was knocked unconscious with whatever they hit me with, and had they left then, I probably would be a physician today. But that is when they continued to kick and stomp on my head against the pavement while I was unconscious. <laughs> I lived. So I don't know what my mission on this earth is, but there's a reason why I'm still here, and I guess I have to figure out what my mission in life is. The day I got hurt, we had gone on a patrol. We got hit with a massive, massive bomb. I was lying on the ground. I had blood all over my face. And uh, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Boom, and then I was out. They never really told us the extent of the injuries. We didn't find out until much later that you know, a piece of shrapnel went through his face and came out right below his eye. You know, and shattered his face, and it's just all this craziness. He's in a coma, just, just overwhelming news. The Marine uh, recruiters came to my school. One of the uh, recruiters, he's just like, "Hey, man, uh, how would you like to uh, join the Marine Corps?" And the way he presented it to me it was like, "It's just going to be a great adventure." And then um, September 11th uh, happened. It was like the whole world has changed. I was just like, oh shit, we're going to war. I graduated from Yale University pre-med in 1995, decided to go to Hawaii on vacation and was assaulted and put into a coma for just less than a month and um, I have been living with a brain injury ever since. I walked into the room, and then you just see a lifeless body that is my brother. He's in a bed with the machine breathing for him, his face swollen out to here, his tongue was out, he had tubes coming out of everything, a tube in his throat, you know, and he was just lifeless. I remember, like, crying my eyes out that night. I was crying like a baby next to him, holding his hand, talking to him. Just getting it all over with. And then the next day I was like, right, okay, gotta be hardcore now. I walked up to Jason's room like, late night, nobody else was there. I was just holding his hand and I just remember I was just crying. And I was just like, you know, you're gonna be okay. Just push through this. From that point on, I've never thought that he was gonna die because I knew that he couldn't because I would kick his ass. He could not die. My mother had gotten that 4.30 a.m. phone call. Mrs. Waller, Jay's been involved in an accident. You need to get here <laughs> as fast as you can. When I think about how amazing my family is, now uh, what they went through was a um, hundred times worse than what I went through. It was painful for everybody. I mean, not to even know if I was gonna live, but then if I was to survive, is Jay going to be able to, to walk? Is he going to be able to talk? The phone rang, and the voice said, Lee, this is David Weston, who's the president of ABC News. And my heart sort of stopped. You know, I knew that this wasn't good. We got to the hospital, 
there were just so many doctors. I just remember thinking all of these people are caring for Bob. It was ENTs, it was the neurosurgeon, it was the general surgeon. When Bob first arrived here, he was in a semi-comatose state. He was not following commands. My first uh, memories in Bethesda, I was woke up and I like I looked up. You know, it's like, what's all this? Who are these people? Where, where am I? I remember the first time I knew that he was okay. He looked at me, and went, and I knew that meant I knew that he just said, "What's wrong?" I'm just like, "What are you kidding me, dude? Are you kidding me? You've been like to the brink of death and back, and you're asking me what's wrong." I had introduced myself to my sister. I didn't even know who she was. I'd say, "Hi, I'm Jay. Nice to meet you." And then she'd say, "Hi, I'm Wendy Waller," and I'd say, "Oh shoot, I should have known that." <laughs> I couldn't really talk that well, but apparently I, I asked my nurse to marry me. And that's when my family knew that Jay's coming back. <laughs> I walked in the room and I parted the curtain and Bob was sitting up in bed. And he turned to me and he said, sweetie, where have you been? Just like that. Oh, yeah, where did I get you? you? And I think I rushed over to him and, you know, gave him a big kiss. And then I thought, okay, where do I begin? I picked up the phone and it was Lee. And she said, Dave, I'm here with your brother in the hospital. And we've had a little bit of a miracle. He's awake, he's talking, he's asking what happened to him. What do you think, Big Dave? So how was so new? <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe it. Shock. Jason arrived at Palo Alto VA on a gurney. Uh, he was not capable of sitting up. He didn't have the trunk strength to even sit up in a chair. And he wasn't communicating at all. Didn't have a consistent yes or no, wasn't nodding and indicating yes and no. I was just like, Jason, uh, how, how are you? Uh, so are you okay with the, uh, the war? You know, it was just like, I wasn't really, I didn't have like a comprehension. But uh, after a month, month and a half, uh, we, like uh, when I'm starting to learn everything, how do you like the war? There should be no doubt in anyone's mind that because of his brain injury, Jason suffers more pain and suffering than the rest of us do in confronting life. The self that was before the blast is forever gone. The blast had taken part of his skull. He had lost an eye um, and an ear. I'm deaf in my uh, left ear. Uh, I'm blind in my left eye. Um, I have a shrapnel all over my body. Um, and the right, um, my right arm, uh, it's got uh, shrapnel. Well, before uh, my accident, I was a little hot boy. I was very English, you know, and I had many girlfriends. They tell me that, like, uh, my accent is very sexy. But um, after the uh, the blast, um, and I woke up and I looked in the mirror, um, I saw the ugliest person I've ever saw, you know, and it was uh, me. The blast smashed all the bones uh, in my face. I couldn't see the old Jason. This had been a formerly handsome, attractive, physically fit, funny, heart of the party kind of guy. But he had a fiance. He was going to marry her, and they were very much in love. The Jason who came back was very different. Jason getting hurt, I know, was extremely hard for Michelle. I know she cried a lot. I didn't really talk to her about why she couldn't be with him, but I understood how hard it was for her, and I still understand how hard it is for her. They have remained friends, but that was another wound for Jason, a wound after he had survived the blast. The hardest part for me is the fact 
that I didn't even know that I had a disability. I was told it was my disability itself that inhibited me from seeing the fact that I had a disability. You make excuses for yourself, you rationalize, you justify, you do all these things, but I look fine, I sound fine, but people just don't understand. The Jason you see now that looks like a regular guy is the result of nine surgeries to put bone plates back in to give him a round head shape, to reconstruct the part of the face that was damaged. He has an artificial eye, but to make the two eyes match. His other eye, um, the one that works, um, had a lot of scarring and, and drooping. I looked in the mirror. I know I'm not a hot boy, you know, um, but you look normal, you know? You look, you look okay. The acceptance of how he looked was a part of giving him the world back. I had to reteach myself how to walk, how to talk, I went through speech therapy, I went through physical therapy, I went through occupational therapy. I really just kind of regained the, the activities of daily living. The task of someone with a significant brain injury is to reinvent who they are, to acknowledge the disabilities in order to be able to compensate around them. I can remember that I was a, a good athlete, and I can remember how I swung a tennis racket. I can remember exactly how I served. Probably 10 months later, I went out to play tennis with my sister. I could not hit the ball. I whiffed on everything. It was so frustrating. I am doing this just how I always used to. Why is it not working? Being, oh, dude, I'm sorry, man. No problem, no problem. All right. Being a TBI, uh, Oh, dude, I can't remember when. On the left side of my uh, brain is uh, damaged, so um, reading, writing, spelling, uh, talking, um, it's very, very difficult for me to do. Stop. Um, I'm attached. Ah. Yeah. I tried to read a like a from a third year old book, and that book was so hard for me to read. A M I R. More. Mirror. 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 Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, bell. Mirabel. Mirabel. It's just Mirabel. Right. Um, now. He's reading, but he's reading at about a fourth grade level, and very slowly. Yeah. And it's not going to be enough in the near future for him to be able to go to college, to become the teacher that he wanted to be. How do you write a paragraph? So for the first thing, mm -hmm. you have to write um, a topic, but... Um... You've now seen him five years post-injury, where he's literally worked five days a week for five years. And to a certain extent, Jason has become almost a poster child for recovery from traumatic brain injury for people returning from this conflict because he has this spirit that I'm going to have what's important in life. I'm going to make it meaningful. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. For the first time when I, I took a, a bus by myself, so I was just waiting on the bus for, for number uh, the 23. I'm pretty nervous, okay. Um, but like uh, I forgot like um, all the uh, location, you know. So that means we went down the uh, the the bus um, by uh, like a mile, past the mile. And I was like, wait, I'm wrong. Okay. So then I had to like, get off the bus, cross the street, you know, and wait for the uh, the bus to wait to come over here. I needed to train my brain, I guess, if you will. Uh, to learn how to remember uh, short-term memory loss was pretty, pretty, uh, um, severe. severe, yes. They would show you pictures of, you know, rhinoceros, an elephant, a dog, a patio, a, you know, a pillow, and I can remember looking at them, and there was one of them that I, I couldn't get the name. I couldn't get the name, and I, and 
she'd be like, uh, Jay, that, that'd be an elephant. Oh, I should have known that. Pill bottle, candle with a wick. What is this one called? It's about H. Oh, yeah. Ha hammer. Yep. Hammer. H A M O R. Hammer. H A M M E R. Hammer. Belt buckle. Belt burl. Belt buckle. Belt buckle. Belt. 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 No, Nora, you're confusing him. Belt. Belt. Buckle. 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 Belt. Buckle. Buckle. Belt buckle. You taught me. Belt buckle. Diamond. You did Diamond. it. Very, uh, One of the effects of the blast is the line between what's a private thought and what's a public thought has essentially disappeared. He had a thought and it would drop like a gumball onto his tongue and just roll right out. That gets people into problems. People see me, they hear me talk, I can remember certain things, I look completely normal completely normal, but you get an idea. You just say it, but it might not be the most appropriate time to say that. So it comes across as something uh, insulting, and then you lose friends. In order for someone with a brain injury to be able to be in the world and have meaningfulness and joyfulness, the environment has to be somewhat more limited in order to match the capacities. And where that limitation, that buffering occurs, is usually family and friends doing some of the protecting. I think the concept of a buffer, a loving buffer, is a crucial one. Your family and friends are your support. They're the ones that lift you higher. So you need them to keep on pushing and keep on believing to make, or in our case, Jason, strong. Not that Jason needs our help, because he is strong, but We'd always be there, we wouldn't let him down, we'd always be there for him, stay positive. <laughs> All Jason has to do is look at me and I'll laugh because I can tell by his eyes what he's thinking. And as thinking. you can see, you see that little scruff under his chin? He's pretty much been growing it since he's been hurt. And look at, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all that's been growing. <laughs> on the chest. <laughs> it's true. His goal was to use his GI benefits um, after he returned to become a a kindergarten teacher. He has a special affinity with children. He really enjoys them. He sort of considers a part of himself a big kid. He communicates really well with them. So one of the things that Jason did was to volunteer at the Whistle Stop, which is the VA's childcare. The kids are so cute. We actually play games outside, like we play uh, hide and go seek or uh, tag. It makes me feel a kid again. It's uh, really fulfilling. They adore him and he's wonderful with them and you can see the calling. You can see that he would have been a fabulous teacher. Um, and uh, he's had parts of the dream come back. Your life is, is not over and it is positive and will be and can be positive and you can still achieve you can still be successful at whatever you put your mind to going to medical school was probably not an option so that door closed but i can go back to school when i first met jason Poole, i remember seeing this guy peeking his head around the corner you could tell that he was shy and, and I was like, hello? And he's like, hi. And, like, and I introduced myself and said, hi, I'm Angela. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm Jason, Jason Poole. I was very shy, you know. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm scared. I was very, very timid. He started talking to me about, like, how he got hurt in Iraq. And he was showing me his, his like, scars. In my brain, like, uh, I would, like, think of the words to say. But... This mouth, it was not saying. We hung out, we talked, and um, we went dancing. Jason loved to dance, I loved to dance. So he had asked me, would you be interested in going out with me? And I was like, well, you know, I wasn't sure because I, I knew that he had a brain injury and he didn't drive. I was like, yes, I'll go out with you. You know, let's, let's give it a try. He just came back all excited, talking about, yeah, me and this girl, we were dancing all night long. I think I like her. I was like 10 years old, you know, and it's just like, yeah, can I, can 
you want to be my girlfriend? You know, so it was, uh, it was good. You know, she said, yeah. So we started to hang out. And then, like, he kissed me. <laughs> and it was, like, magical because, like, when he kissed me, like, I feel like all this electric static, like, goes, like, I don't even know if you call it static, but, like, you feel like, like, like an explosion in your body. Like, it felt so nice. So I'm going to feed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'll give you a sub. <laughs> what impressed me about Jason so much, you know, with him struggling to regain what he's lost, he was so positive about it. You could see him struggling. He would start with a sentence, and I had a habit of filling in the words that he was missing, and he was just like, oh, he's like, babe, just, just let me finish, let me finish, and then he would forget. Like, he was trying so hard to be the 100% man that he could be like he was before his injuries. Oh, there's your phone. Sorry. That's Angela, I'm sorry. Please wait. Hello? Hey, I forgot to remind you. Make sure you wash your hands all day today, okay? Okay, baby. Like Just with that swine flu, like, if you touch things, make sure you wash your hands. Okay, baby. I just want to remind you because I just thought about it. Okay. I know you. Okay? Yes, baby. Love you, babe. Love you too. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. I was just like, babe, we have a great time, you know, um, and I really love you. And uh, and so then I got her a ring. It's just like, will you marry me? It's just like, <gasps> oh, dude, she's crying so loud. I didn't see it coming, and I just I started crying. I was just like, oh. I think as a TBI spouse, the number one importance is to have a support system. You need to have support because if you don't have any support, you're just going to get depressed. You're not going to see recoveries from people in one night. You know, it's, it takes time. Just be patient and take your time and be supportive. And don't be so quick to just, oh, I give up. On Memorial Day, I think it's about... Um uh, the war, you know, and uh, the uh, the friends uh, who who passed on. It was really sad, but uh, I made it. I'm just I'm just glad. So Monday we're gonna have a barbecue and yeah. remember those who have passed on. Yeah. yeah. And be grateful that Jason is still here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's a girl over Jason. We're gonna get married and. Uh, uh, have some kids, and then we're gonna live old, you know. And it's just uh, that—that that to me is perfect. His motto is "Nothing keeps me down," and he has lots of heart. He wants to give a message of resilience to others who are injured. I've done white water rafting in the uh, Grand Canyon. It honestly was amazing. Jason is an absolute delight, an absolute delight from the first time we talked. Um, but the change has been incredible. Um, what I would say was a very, very timid young man, you know, coming onto this trip. Jason now is at the front of the boat. He's in the middle of everything. He's unloading the boat. He's washing the dishes. Like, like when I woke up in the morning, you know, and I got to, like, put all this stuff together, you know, and basically I did it all myself. You know, and I put it all back together, and so I was just like, yes, I did it, I did it, you know? So basically, that's, that's, why, I'm, uh, that's, that's why I'm here. For four years, um, actually, I've been going to um, Aspen, uh, Colorado, to go uh, snowboarding. The award is for the uh, courageous uh, veteran who helps like uh, more uh, like patients or or other veterans? Six hundred uh, people were in there. Jason Paul. I was like, what? The? I was like, it's me. Yeah, yeah, it's with you. So then I had to walk up. Everybody, everybody was just standing up and clapping. It was just a, an amazing night. Amazing night.
Jason is always going to be the person that inspires. He's inspiring those people in the VA to have a lot more hope because he was just like, hey, look how far I've come. I got my own house, got my own woman. It's like, just don't worry about it. And he just makes people realize that they have lots of potential and makes them realize they could do whatever they want to do if they really put their heart into it. He'd be away from family. For me, working with Jason allows me to use everything I ever learned as a therapist. And he continuously surprises me and intrigues me. It's a very spiritual as well as emotionally intimate relationship. How are you, my friend? Thank you. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, do you remember anything that happened? Due to Bob Woodruff's very successful broadcasting life, he has touched a lot of people. People know him. His injury combined with who he is and who he's built himself to be. I would love to be able to touch as many people as he can through his work and through his book, his wife's book. I think that he is an extraordinary man. I look forward to meeting him. I know that we'll have a bond, certainly, just for the sh sheer fact that we are brain injury survivors. It's sort of a, a brotherhood, our sisterhood, and somebody can understand the same struggles as you have. It's an added comfort to know that someone else can feel what you feel. I'm now in a doctorate program in physical therapy. That's perfect for me. Physical therapy is a huge, huge component of brain injury rehabilitation. Maybe all things do happen for a reason. I was able to discover my r r true path. I'm an average Joe, you know, and uh, I just have the crazy cap that happened to me. It just sucks, <laughs> you know, but it's cool, you know. Your tattoos are rather cool, Thank you know. You. Extra cool. They look super cool because I love stars. Have a lovely day. You and, too. Uh, take care. You too. My advice to TBI survivors, um, well, like, first off, I have my uh, positive attitude. You know, it's just like the first year, first year and a half, um, it's a struggle, you know. Um, but you know what? Just just work, just work, work, work. You know, just, just try to be the best you can. I'm like, a couple of years down the road and uh, a couple um, going to be better. <laughs>